Andy here from the Eastwood R&D department. Today I'm going to introduce to you our Eastwood Pro Tubing Notcher. You can notch anything from 3 quarter inch tubing up to 3 inch tubing. So you can make a go-kart for your kid, a roll cage for your drag car, or an exhaust for your hot rod. Simply use any half inch drill to power your tubing notcher. It can either be mounted on your workbench or in a vise. It accepts all standard hole saws and it is adjustable up to 50 degrees with the loosening of one bolt. Today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to use the tubing notcher so you can confidently finish your project. Once you're set up, you want to make sure the notcher is level on all axes. If you don't have the notcher level, you won't get exact notches every time. All right, next thing you want to do is set up your hole saw itself. We give you two spacers and an adapter. You need to put the first one on the shaft itself. The second one is going to go on the adapter. And then you're going to go and thread in your desired hole saw size. You'll then move over to the actual shaft itself and start threading in. Don't worry about getting it extremely tight. When you actually start doing your notching, it'll naturally tighten up itself. All right, so what I've set up is a small jig. That way what we can do is we can do a 90 degree here. We'll show that notch in a moment. And then we're going to do a 45. We'll be able to show you how to get the exact dimensions right and not waste too much material. That way you're going to have stronger roll cage, stronger go-kart, whatever the, uh, you're actually making in your project, it's going to be stronger. You can use any, any drill. I would suggest using a, a 120 volt outside of a uh, battery operated. If you're doing a bunch of notches throughout the day, you're going to be killing batteries pretty quickly. So for now, we'll be using uh, you know, what we have on hand. What we're going to do is we're going to load the piece of tubing into the actual notcher itself. What we're going to do is we're going to start by getting this snug. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to do a 90 degree notch, which on our scale is going to bring us to zero. And based on this notcher's design, you need one wrench, and you have your other hand on the actual block itself. And we'll be tightening this down. Where other designs, you need to have two wrenches, and you can't hold you know, two wrenches and the actual block at the same time. In order to be efficient when it comes to using as little tube as possible, right now we've got inch and a half tubing here. So we want to set this up so it is roughly a third of the diameter of the actual tubing itself. I just marked half an inch. So we're going to line up the edge of the hole saw in that location. That way we're not wasting a tremendous amount of material and then we'll be tightening that down. And then based on the outer diameter of the hole saw, which is the same as the tubing itself, you can see that it's going to cut just a tiny bit out of here. And you're not going to waste any tubing. Something to make sure you do if you want to keep your hole saws alive for a very long time is to put some cutting oil on the edge, maybe a little bit on the actual tubing itself. So we're going to get started with our 90 degree notch now that we're set up. We do have a little bit extra here. You can see where the flat edges are. We're going to go over with our belt sander and clean up the edges. That way we have a perfect edge to weld to. And we got a little bit of an edge all the way around the entire piece of tubing. That way when we weld, we've got full penetration and a nice clean weld. All right, now we're going to swap over to a 45 degree notch, which you can see in the back. We'll lock it down right here. And in order to use as little waste of tube as possible, what we're going to do is we're going to push the hole saw forward and we're going to line it up so the edges right there, they're basically just kissing each other. And we'll tighten it down and we'll get our notch started. Lubricate a little bit again and we'll go. As you can see again, basically no wasted material at all. If you're done cleaning the edges, before you're going to go and weld, you might want to get some acetone. There's going to be you know, small burrs, there's going to be cutting fluid inside. So you want to really clean out the inside. When you get steel from, whether it be a home improvement store or a steel mill, there's always going to be all sorts of mill scale and uh, coatings. So when you go to weld, 
you're gonna make sure that uh, it's all cleaned up. We wanna make sure the outside and the inside are clean. We did our notch. We did some of the cleanup that we needed to to make sure there was no little pieces on the edge and uh, did some cleaning of the actual tube that we're gonna be end up welding to. You can see at 90 degrees, there's no space all the way around. So when you do your weld, you're gonna have full penetration and also material on material instead of material gap in a weld, you're gonna have more strength. So we wanna do a 45 degree notch and we want it you measure from this end, we want the very tip to be at five inches. We're gonna quick make a line there. We're also gonna come down and do the same thing. You don't have to do this if you're doing 45s, or I mean any of them. What you need, what I'm just trying to do is show you how little of material you can waste when you actually do the proper notch. You could do the math to determine the length, but in this case, measuring is just as easy. Looks like we are at seven inches. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our notch we had already here, find the center of the notch here. Let's make a mark. So we're at seven. Something we're gonna do next is load it into the machine, do another 45, but I'll show you how to uh, make sure that it is exactly the right axis. With doing a 45 on both ends, you want to be cutting this way. So your notch is gonna go in here, you know, the tube's gonna go in there. So you're gonna load it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab another piece of tubing. We're gonna shove that other piece of tubing inside and we're gonna get a reading on the actual, make sure we're level. And that way, the access is gonna be perfect. We're gonna set up exactly where we need that notch to be. You can see the hole saw there is right next to where the seven inch line was. We're just gonna snug this down for now and then go back and take our measurement again with the angle. All right, so we're level. We're also at our line. We're gonna snug this down. Right. And we'll go. We went in and actually bottomed out on the whole saw itself. What you can do is you can take an adjustable. You can actually grab the end of it bend the piece out, break off the piece you notched, and then go back and finish your notch. So what we're gonna do to make sure we check our work, we have our lines, the top and bottom. As you put it in, making so that it goes right on that line, you can see down there, if we lift it up, it was exactly there. So we got perfect top and bottom at a 45 degree angle. And you can see that there is little to no gap all the way around both pieces. As we said before, when you do this, you wanna have metal on metal and not necessarily relying on your weld to take that strength. You want the actual tubes pressing on the tubes. As you can see, we only did a couple small tacks on the first piece. That being the case that once you do full welding, you're gonna actually have some warpage if you don't properly gusset what you're building. So we're gonna put our piece back here at our designated marks. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple small tacks in each place. That way, you're gonna get a little bit of strength so then when you do your final welding, you're not gonna have any warpage. Um, if you're building like a race car chassis, you're gonna do like a, basically a stitch weld you know, all throughout, and then you're gonna do final welding, and that way there isn't warpage throughout. And you actually have your, uh, your chassis go, you know, out of square.
As you can see, the Eastwood Professional Tubing Notcher has the precision and the capability you need for any project at hand. Whether you're building a roll cage for your race car, an exhaust for your hot rod, or a go-kart for your kid, go to eastwood.com to pick one up today.